For this objective, we'll also be converting from the U.S. customary system to the metric system and vice versa. This time we will be dealing with mass. So let's recall the basic unit of mass in the metric system. The basic unit of mass in the metric system is the gram. Probably the best way to remember the gram is the fact that a large paper clip weighs approximately one gram. So that'll give you an idea of about how much one gram is. It's about the weight of a paper clip. Let's also talk about the difference between weight and mass. When we are talking about the metric system, we will be talking about mass. Weight depends on the pull of gravity. In other words, your weight will change depending on the pull of gravity, whereas your mass will not. By the way, since I have this large paper clip, let's remember a few other things about the paper clip. Again, I have a large one. The width of a large paper clip is about one centimeter and the width of the wire used in making a large paper clip, that's about one millimeter. So keep those things in mind. A lot of the metric system you can be reminded of with a large paper clip. So we want to convert from the U.S. customary system to the metric system and vice versa. So we need some conversions. Here we have some approximations. One gram is approximately 35 thousandths ounce. One gram is approximately 35 thousandths of an ounce. So that'll also give you an idea of a gram. Also a kilogram, this will help you converting when thinking about kilograms and pounds. A kilogram is approximately two and two tenths pounds. So a kilogram is approximately two and two tenths pounds. Let's use an example dealing with kilogram. In other words, suppose a man weighs 80 kilograms. What is that man's weight in pounds? Suppose a man weighs 80 kilograms. What is that man's weight in pounds? Well, we know one kilogram is approximately two and two tenths pounds, so 80 kilograms will be approximately 80 times two and two tenths. But if you have trouble seeing that, we can still use unit fractions. Here's what I started with. Remember, we multiply by a unit fraction, one that has kilograms in the denominator and pounds in the numerator, and you can simply use this approximation I gave you. I have one kilogram is approximately two and two tenths pounds, and then notice kilograms divide out like I want. I have pounds, it's 80 times two and two tenths over one times one, and if you multiply this out, you'll have 176 pounds. This is an approximate unit fraction because this is an approximation. So in fact, the man weighing 80 kilograms weighs approximately 176 pounds. Let's try that again. Let's do some conversion. Let's suppose we have, say, 100 grams and I want to know approximately how many ounces is that? 100 grams. Well, one gram is 35 thousandths of an ounce, so 100 grams, do you see we just multiply this number by 100? If not, again, you can use approximate unit fractions. I want the unit fraction that has grams in the denominator so that these divide out and ounces in the numerator because I want to end up with ounces. And we know that one gram is approximately 35 thousandths of an ounce. And so if we multiply, this is an approximation. Notice grams divide out like we want. 
multiplying this by 100 moves the decimal point two places to the right. So that's approximately three and five tenths ounces. By the way, it is also true that since one gram is approximately 35 thousandths of an ounce, one ounce is about 28 grams. One ounce is about 28 grams. If you keep that in mind, you might want to start looking very closely at capacities that you purchase at the store. For example, here I have a can of tuna and there is dual labeling going on. This says net weight, six ounces, and then it gives also that weight or mass here in grams. Since it's six ounces, and I'm telling you six ounces, one ounce is about 28 grams. So if one ounce is 28 grams, six ounces will be about six times 28 grams. And let's see how close we are with this. Six times eight is 48. And six times two is 12 plus four is 16. So I'm saying this is going to be somewhere around 168 grams. And let's see what it is. It's six ounces and it says 170 grams. So start looking at the dual labeling that you'll find all throughout the store that will help you get used to the metric system and also conversions between the US system and the metric system. But this is about 170 grams and it's the same as six ounces. Those things help us get used to these two systems of measurement. At this time, you might want to look over your approximate conversions. Look over the approximations we talked about. The only exact equivalency that I gave you was two and 5400 centimeters is equal to one inch. The rest of these are merely approximations. But practice converting from the US system to the metric system and vice versa. By the way, before you do that, let's look at a few true and false and see if you have a good feeling for the metric system yet. Let's look at the following. Here we have a piece of candy weighs about five grams. And I wanna know if these are true or false statements. So a piece of candy weighs about five grams. Five grams is not much. That's about five large paper clips. Is that possible for a piece of candy to weigh about the same as five large paper clips? The answer is yes. So that can be a true statement. Next, a basketball player is two meters tall. What did we remember about a meter? A meter is a little longer than a yard. Well, a yard is three feet, so two yards is six feet. Six feet then is around two meters. So is there a basketball player that's about two meters tall? The answer is quite possible because that's around six feet tall. So that statement could very well be true. Next, a cat weighs 100 kilograms. Now think about kilograms for a moment. Remember a kilogram is about two and two tenths pounds. Since a kilogram is about two and two tenths pounds, 100 kilograms, that would be around 220 pounds. And I hope that one's false. So a cat weighs 100 kilograms. That's about equivalent to a cat weighing 220 pounds. We're gonna say that's false. And then finally, a thirsty man drank a liter of water. What do you remember about a liter? A liter is a little more than a quart of water, and that certainly is possible. A thirsty man drank a liter of water. Kind of think about a thirsty man drinking a quart of water. That's possible, so the liter of water is certainly possible and will say true.
Once again, that's our hope, you getting used to the metric system and certainly making some very close approximate conversions between the metric system and the U.S. system if needed.